Previously on Phoenix Wright, Spirit of Justice. During our investigation, we found a set of unknown prints on the coffin on the stage, but they didn't match the prints of any of the people involved in this case. Misty Fam, or should I say Bonnie number two? These are your fingerprints, aren't they? Are there really two Bonnies? Yes, there are. I'm Betty. What? She's not actually doing that, right? Whoa! Well, there you go. Yeah, I'm confused too. Whatever, let's keep going. Man, look at this, two clowns singing with one voice, boy, let me tell you. Anyway, welcome back to Phoenix Wright, everybody. Spirit of Justice, what happened under stage? I don't know, let's find out. Whoop! It's true, I business in the understage passage. Oh, I can't even do that voice right now, jeez, man. You had business in the understage passage because of the upcoming trick, yeah. Oh, you know what? I probably read all these last time, didn't I? So I didn't need to go through and read those again. Oh well, um... Three had business in the Understage Passage because of the upcoming trick. Okay, well... Let's get all the details filled in, because I have an idea here, but... If you're in the Understage Passage, which I remind you is the crime scene... Then you most certainly should be counted as a potential suspect. But I don't have any motive to kill Mr. Reyes! <laughs> But you, by your own admission, hate Miss Wright. When she was arrested as a suspect, you were cheering it on. You said it was what she deserved. Oh man. Still haven't really worked out this, this guy's voice yet. I kind of like what I'm doing now, but I don't know. I might have to get a little bit more exotic with it. Maybe in the future, I don't know. But uh. So you believe the witness killed a man simply due to her dislike of Trucy Wright? so stupid, you know. As a motive, it is not... As a motive, is that not improbable at best? But what if her hatred caused her to bear a strong sense of malice against my client? Look, Trissy just made me mad, that's all. I mean, even though she's younger than me, she's got so much skill and popularity. And she's cute besides. Girl, she makes me so mad. I wish she would drop dead. Betty, don't talk like that. Shut your yap! So it's just simple jealousy. Say, Betty, that next trick you were getting ready for? Yeah, the fire trick. Jeez, look at these two. Bouncing in unison, man. It was a fire trick, right? The one Mr. Reyes was supposed to do? Alright, uh, yeah. Um, Bonnie. We're trying to get Betty's testimony right now, so... Oh, right, I'm sorry. <laughs> You can step down if you'd like. Please. It's be a lot less confusing that way. I'm worried about Betty, though. She could lose her temper and say awful things sometimes. Hey, what are you, my mother? Don't forget, I'm the older sister. You got that? Me? Yes, I got it. Hmm. <laughs> Guess I'd worry about Mr. M uh, Mr. Uh, no. Guess I'd worry about Mount Betty constantly blowing her top if I were Bonnie, too. Mount Betty. Jeez. So Betty Crocker. Alright, so you were downstairs getting ready for the fire trick, whatever. That's right! It's a very dangerous trick, so I had to make sure we prepared for it. Oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 go back. Okay, you see, I remember, here, here's the thing that I'm thinking, it's the fire bucket was back there. But it was dusty, like nobody ever used it. And you were taking every necessary precaution, is that right? Yeah, I think we're getting somewhere here. Of course, every precaution. After all, it's a very dangerous trick that uses real life, real, real fire, not real life. Well, they did use real life in some sense, uh... I mean, we had to be ready in case the curtain caught on fire or something, right? By the time people realized it wasn't a part of the act, it might be too late, huh? If by people you mean Athena Sykes, then yes. <laughs> wow, fire trick, that sounds really impressive. Hehe, <laughs> your beard would go up in smoke, old man! I bet people stick you for a cue ball or something without it. What the hell? Uh, that's it. Guilty, right there. Never mind. <laughs> it was in the script and I really wanted to see it, but I couldn't because of the accident. Alright, well, I mean, it's kind of like no shit, right? I see the fire trick was a part of the script. It seems Mr. Rias was scheduled to perform it later in the show. Oh shit, I think I need to sneeze. 
did you not get to see him practice it beforehand? No, during rehearsal he said he didn't feel well, so he couldn't breathe any fire for me. Wait, let me get this straight. He couldn't breathe fire because he wasn't getting a message on his phone while he was recording. My magical powers appear to be on the wane today. That's what he said. So it's just a part of his usual the great Mr. Rius shtick. Shit. <laughs> it's really too bad I didn't get to see the trick because of the incident. Which was completely unexpected, of course. <laughs> Jeez. Well, I tell ya. Okay, well, I guess the sneeze was a dud, so whatever. Shut up, you're gonna give it away. Anyway, I was real busy. Alright. So what exactly do you mean by you're gonna give it away? The secret to the trick? Oh no, the kids are out of school. See, Bonnie, you and your big mouth. Now, oh god, wow, they're really having it. Now Lobster Boy wants to know what we're talking about. Eep, I'm sorry. So how many ellipses is that? About four? I guess so. Yes, well, if you were preparing for the next magic trick, I'm sure you wouldn't have had the time to commit murder. Wow, looks like the old geezer isn't senile just yet, huh? I bet you live a good long life. <laughs> ho ho, I plan to be sitting up here at least another ten years. Good for you, Judge. Good for you. Oh my god, did they have to do that outside my window? Seriously. Ten more years, I don't know about that. What did we discuss about inner monologues, Athena? Well, more power to you, I guess. In any case, I was so busy I didn't have the time to off anybody. <laughs> and that was that. Yeah, we too busy to have the chance to kill Mr. Reyes. Hmm. Final statement, usually the most important one, but not always. Are you just trying to cover for Betty? No, of course not. I believe in my sister. I know she'd never murder anyone. But you think my client would? No, I believe in Trucy too. I know she'd never murder anyone either. Well, we just ran out of suspects in that case. Yeah, but, you know, maybe it was Jim Carrey. He's an asshole sometimes, you know. See, you should've kept your mouth shut, dummy. You're just making a fool of yourself. Just be nice and quiet like a good little bunny. Nice and quiet like a good little bunny, that is. Alright, I guess I'm no help. Aw. Oh boy. It's impossible to get anything out of Bonnie with Betty right there. So Betty was too busy getting ready for the next trick that time for murder, huh? There must be some way to prove that that wasn't the case. Okay, well, let's do it then. I don't know how much of that I'll show, like, sometimes I like to press everything, you know, but maybe it's not always necessary. Okay, very dangerous tricks, they had to make sure we prepare for it. Here we go. Let's see. It's a fire bucket, a bucket to be used in case of fire. Not only was it empty, but dust lines the inside of the pail. I assume that means, like, that even if she picked it up and moved it somewhere to prepare... I'm gonna try this anyway, just whatever. Yeah, I figured as much. I had to break this tea, Betty, but there's a big flaw in your testimony. As big as the one in that floating trick you did earlier. Oh, damn. All harsh words. Well, let me tell you something, forehead boy. No one has ever figured out how we do our teleportation trick. The fact that she's calling me forehead, too, this furthers this weird thing that I keep thinking. Huh. <sighs> no one except me, you mean. Oh, man. Well, huh. We have even better tricks up our sleeves. Huh? We do? Told you to keep it zipped! Well, you're the one that said it, jeez. Mr. Justice, what's this about a flaw in the testimony? Well, let me just tell you. The script has this to say about the fire trick. This will be dangerous, make sure the fire bucket is ready. However, we found the fire bucket lying empty backstage except for a layer of dust. Ah! Uh, uh, uh. Oh my god. This character is reminding me of this ASMR channel I found yesterday. It's the most adorable freaking channel. It's like Dark Misty, M Y S T Y. Anyway, whatever. You didn't even attempt to get ready for the next trick, did you, Betty? You were too busy making brownies. You know what I'm talking about. 
Vanity fam, you will explain yourself. Uh, there's nothing to explain. Come on, Betty, we can't hide it any longer. We might as well tell them. <laughs> Shut up, you can barely take care of yourself. I'll try and tell me what to do. <clears throat> well, if neither of you will explain, I guess I'll have to. The reason Betty didn't prepare for the fire trick is because she knew the show wouldn't go on. Yep. I didn't even read what that third option said. You didn't prepare for the fire trick because you knew, didn't you? You knew that the body would be found and that the show would then be cancelled. How about it? It's not foolproof, but it gets us somewhere. D -d Don't be ridiculous, you insignificant speck of a man! I'm gonna yank those lame bangs of yours off! Is that what you want, huh? Objection. Objection, indeed. Whatever, they can grow back. <laughs> now stop stalling and quit roasting. Or quit stalling and start roasting, whatever. It's a line from Elmer Fudd. Or not Elmer Fudd, but Yosemite Sam, my bad. This, I can't reveal my secrets, I'm a magician. Objection. Not anymore. Oh, gee, you objected to her. You've been chasing the shadow of an illusory culprit defense. Oh. And having chanced upon a convenient target, you have yet let yourself get carried away. There we the British thing's trying to come back over here. Exactly! What's your proof, huh? And yet, I can see that the witness's taste for false words has also been proven. Oh, geez, holy crap! I thought he was about to, like, unzipping something for a second there. I was like, geez louise, dude, it's the first case with you. I advise you to confine your deceitful trickery to your magic act, witness. Cecil Trickery! Uh-oh. As your court-appointed therapist, I'd like to add something here, Betty. You finally let yourself be who you really are. Ain't nothing wrong with that. But if you continue to hide behind lies, you'll just be imprisoning your heart all over again. So don't do that. All these questions mean you're trying to put me in prison for real! So I'll be behind bars either way! Does that mean you're admitting your guilt? Of course not! I can't believe you people. Every one of you thinks I did something I didn't do! You... Lobster boy! Cue ball geezer! Head case brat! Cerebrus monk! Good god. That was just a gatling gun of name calling. Cue ball geezer. I'll have you know... Headcase brat. Really? Betty, calm down. Come on now, deep breaths, deep breaths. Ha! 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 Look! I'm not the murderer, I tell you! Then how'd you know the show would be called off before the fire trick? I... I told you. We can't reveal our secrets. We're... under contract. Oh no... I like that you said contract, though, because you know what that means. You know what that means. As a certain other person who's been using shady contracts to get around in this case, and I think that means we might just be bringing his ass up to the roasting table pretty soon here. Be that as it may, you're obviously a suspect in this case. Ugh, I hate it when it claps. It gives me the claps just looking at it. I'm beginning to see the karmic threads that make up the intricate tapestry that is this case. Huh? <laughs> Say what? Allow me to summarize your assertion's defense. First, that the victim was killed in the understage passage. And second, that the witness and the accused are the only two who could have done it. Alright, fine. What's more, Betty knew that the body would be found, and that the magic show would then be called off. Therefore, it's reasonable to conclude that Betty killed the victim under stage. But what if Betty knew that the show would be called off for some other reason? Like what? <laughs> I suddenly felt like Luca Jin when I said that line. I don't know why. In the course of my investigation, I found it strange that the dragon set piece fell when it did. 
Yeah? That in conjunction with the body tumbling from the coffin in such a dramatic fashion... All seemed too perfect for mere happenstance. Well, I agree. It was as though the entire chain of events had been planned out in advance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> These two were just freaking crazy. I don't know. I was trying to I was gonna I was trying to like think of a name like Abbott and Costello, but not really. <laughs> After deciding to take this case, I scrupulously studied everything I could about the mass media in this country. Oh, you did? Sorry to hear that. I read the newspaper, old news reports, I even browsed... Bleh, <clears throat> browsed tabloid magazines. Ugh. How very industrious of you, I'm impressed. During this process, I learned about a strange practice favored by the TV world. And I didn't like it. <laughs> Not surprised. A practice called the hidden camera prank. Eh? Uh, okay. Betty and Bonnie, you knew about this, did you not? About the dead body appearing, the set piece falling, the show being suspended. You two were informed of this plan. By Take Two TV in advance, correct? Indeed. Take two TV, bring him in here. Is that true? Betty, please, let's tell them now. I can't hold it in anymore. Mm-hmm. Take it fine, you got us. Everything the prosecutor said is true. The TV station paid us to cooperate with them on this plan. It was all a prank. A big setup planned out in advance. Uh Misery is showing up dead in the coffin. The set piece falling down. It was all completely scripted. Was it? But he really still died, right? It was all a prank! Oh boy. A prank on who though? Trucy or the audience or just everybody? Bonnie, is this really true? Yes, Mr. Reyes was supposed to pretend to be dead. That's how it was supposed to go. So he was in on it, too. That's right. He was supposed to show up dead in the coffin. And then the set piece would fall down. Trucy would be shocked and start to panic. That's how the prank script went. Yeah, wow. <laughs> that face, you, usually it pulls away when he makes that face. So just for a moment, let's like zoom in on that and just take a good look at it. Get a sense for who this person really is. Drooping upper lip, covering the mind of a simple fool. Or whatever that line is from Super Mario RPG. That's making a lot of references to that. I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact I've been streaming it. But we never thought he'd actually wind up dead. Yeah, that was the only thing that was different from the script. Poor Mr. Reese. I'm so completely lost right now. <laughs> well, dude, I tell ya. Well, Betty and Bonnie, it certainly sounds like you have some explaining to do. Alright, alright. I guess desperate times call for desperate measures. Just this once, we'll share how it was done with you. Oh, well, here we go again. Pop. I was gonna say, I didn't see a bunny under the other hat there, whatever. After our teleportation trick, I went down under stage. When Mr. Reese's body appeared from the coffin on stage, it was time for Betty to do her job in the other stage passage. That's right, I used the remote control for the winch, connected it to the dragon set piece. Ah. Uh. I made it fall down. Remote control, you say? And just before the dragon fell, I called Trucy to the backstage so she wouldn't get hurt. After that, the plan was for Mr. Reese to come back to life in front of a panicked Trucy. He was supposed to laugh and fly up away. That was how it was scripted anyway. But for some reason, he really did turn up dead. So he kind of just stayed on the ground. <laughs> well. What kind of sick joke is that? 
Sounds like a terribly mean-spirited prank to me. The poor defendant was trying to do her magic show. I guess so. I'm sorry, Trucy. <laughs> Whatever. It's not the ratings for Ajit Raja's idea anyway. Yes. Yeah, it sounds just like the kind of thing a guy like him would come up with. Um, this is the prank plan script we got from the ratings, Raja. Ugh. Okay, so in a way I was right, there was two scripts. Sort of. The corpse appearing and the set piece falling were staged by Roger Ratings. Uh, there's more details to that. I think that's pretty much it. Dang it, you made us break our contract! Now we won't get paid! Hmm, where does this all leave us? Who killed the victim and when? Yes, exactly. Those are the key questions. If Mr. Reese was only pretending to be dead in the coffin as part of a prank, then when he was under stage, there would still be life within him. And if that is the case, then Betty, who was also under stage, may be excluded from our list of suspects. I like the way they made her disappear there. <laughs> nice little bit of storytelling, <laughs> sort of. Witness, was the victim alive up until he entered the coffin? Oh, well, now that we spilled the beans, might as well show you this video. Oh no! A video. Yes, I love videos. Greetings, viewers! It is I, the great Mr. Riss. I didn't have a voice before. We are currently in the middle of Trucy's escape trick. Having snuck through the understage passage undetected, I am now hiding backstage, preparing to play a little prank on Trucy. I'm about to hide in the coffin, which Trucy will stab with her rubber sword. And when the coffin opens, ho ho, I will be in it, acting as though I've met my maker. Can you imagine the look on Trucy's face then? Ho ho, I can hardly wait! He's about to hide in the coffin. Uh... What was he vlogging down there? Jesus Christ, dude. I'm gonna take a drink here. Oh, Alright then. Ugh. I'm not sure why she had that video, but okay, whatever. Uh... The victim passed through the understage where Betty DeFam was. Unless he just left it with her, I don't know. And came up into the backstage area. We know this because Mr. Rius appeared to be backstage when he shot the video we saw. Uh huh. He appears that way, yeah. And defense, you proposed the following, did you not? What if the victim was killed under the stage before being put into the coffin? But then what about this video? This footage was taken just before Mr. Rius entered the coffin. Hmm, I oh don't know. There's no way, there's no date and timestamp or anything on that video, there's no way of knowing. I mean, maybe that was part of his contract, is to make that video, you know, and I don't know, she's... Yes, it is horrible, but true. The tragedy did indeed play out right there on the stage. <laughs> Squish. Went into the coffin where Mr. Rius was hiding. Trucy Wright thrust her blade. Damn. Like close up though. Is this the first time we've seen that. I think it might be. <laughs> See, told you so. I mean. Ugh. So are you saying the incident was a tragic accident that happened during a prank? It would be an accident if the accused had no knowledge of the prank beforehand. Hmm. So let us ask the accused herself, Miss Wright. Did you have prior knowledge of the prank? What? I... I... Tell him, Trucy. You didn't know anything about it, right? Oh, what if she did? Are you sure? I was gonna say, if you throw those at her, man, I'm gonna kick your butt. Still, you think you can play innocence, do you, in that case? 
You leave me little choice but to present this piece of evidence. It looks like some sort of note. We know better than to take these at face value, though. Oh. Oh, what is it? I found this note in the dressing room after the incident. Oh, no. At the time, I did not understand what it meant, but all is clear to me now. Oh, well. It says, get the video camera after Mr. Reyes comes tumbling out. Here's a note signed by the accused. Whoa, what? Is it? I didn't see the signature. I was like, uh, huh. Instructing Bonnie to collect Mr. Reese's video camera from him, it seems. I don't get it. It doesn't make any sense. I found it in the dressing room before the show. When I saw it, I realized that Trucy knew about the prank. It does bear her signature. I'll give you that much. But we've already seen. Ugh. Shoot. Ah, oh, I got another sneeze. So the defendant had prior knowledge of the prank. It would appear so, yes. When she learned about the plan to trick her, she decided to use it to her own advantage. So she thrust the steel sword into the coffin where the victim stood chuckling to himself. Is that not what happened, Miss Wright? Of course not! And I didn't write or sign that note! Oh, but the handwriting matches yours. It looks like it came from a typewriter. Your typewriter. <laughs> All the evidence and testimony points to you being the culprit. But I didn't do it. It wasn't me. It's cool through the hang in there. We know you didn't. That explain the existence of this note. You can do that, can you not? I can't explain it. I didn't write it, so I don't understand. I didn't kill Mr. Rias, you have to believe me! Man, they just keep slamming with more and more evidence in here. Oh. Yeah, that stunned silence on the part of everyone here. Silence is deafening. Continue struggling against the threads of your own karma if you wish, accused. Man, I... Even as you are inescapably caught in the web of fate you've spun for yourself. I mean, he has a very poetic way of speaking, I will say. And he's like the least angry prosecutor I think we've ever seen. Holy jeez. I mean, even Gavin wasn't this freaking chill. Miss Wright. It's time to resign yourself to your fate. No, I didn't do it. I... Oh, she must be so scared. No, 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 you, you guys. Hank, oh my god, get off of it. Oh, she's insisting. Oh my god, shut up! Oh, y'all are a bunch of ass hats. Get him out of here. Ugh, the clap. Here we go. Your Honor, I suggest we put an end to this tragedy now. Give your official ruling and let us offer the victim's soul the last rights it deserves. Very well. I suppose I have no other choice. Boy, they're really building this up for something here. The score hereby finds the defendant, Trucy Wright. Oh boy! Oh, thank God. I mean, I had to do it. Like, I didn't have a choice, really, did I? The defense has an objection. You, even now, you would. I am not thrown in the towel of this just yet. I won't give up, and I refuse to let either of them down. Mr. Wright, who's counting on me. 
and Trucy has put all of her faith in me. Mr. Justice, the fact that you have raised an objection is nothing new, per I'll say. It means that you have evidence to, with which to refute the prosecution's claims, correct? No! Well, maybe we do, I don't know. Actually, we do. There's one piece of evidence we can present here. Very well, Mr. Justice, you may proceed. As we saw in the show footage, there's no question that the defendant thrust a sword into the coffin. The defense doesn't dispute this point. But let us not forget that this was a magic show filled with tricks and illusions. We can't take everything we see at face value. Hmm. So you're saying some sleight of hand was somehow involved? Yes. The defense contends that the sword the defendant used was not the cause of death. Now what was it Trucy told me she did just before she thrust the sword into the coffin? She switched the swords. Remember, you interrupted my verdict to make this claim. <laughs> because, and, uh, and that's never happened before. So anyway, you will be severely penalized if I find you were bluffing. Holy shit. It's a game set match, huh? It's fine, Your Honor. You know what I'm gonna do, though? I'll make sure we don't get this wrong. It's fine, Your Honor. This shows that it's possible that the sword Miss Wright used was not the cause of death. Okay. Alright, one by one, let's look here. Stage diagram. I mean, maybe once I... There must be something I forgot about, because... I feel like this would be really obvious, though. Harness around his waist for a stunt wire. Huh, fingerprinting. That, that did cross my mind, but I don't know, is that in here? The thing about him, like, facing the other way? Mr. Reyes' palm prints are reversed. See image. I mean, that has to come up eventually. I feel like this might be a good time for that. Otherwise, let me just see what else is in here before I jump the gun here, because I've done this before, and it's been like... I mean, at least we'll get to see a game over here if I do screw this up. The clipboard? No, it's not going to be a clipboard. Sword stand contains the rubber sword. Trucy says she swapped in for the trick. I'm not sure why this says it contains the rubber sword. When the sword we found there had blood on it. At least I think it did. Unless that was a different sword. So it's possible it could be that too. But, uh, I don't know, just uh, just basically because they've been talking about the sword here. But, you know, actually, I'm kind of leaning towards this a little bit more because it says the thing about Trucy switching the swords. And he did say before this that, like, what did Trucy tell me that she did? She told me she switched the swords. So, actually, that might be it. See, we still haven't really brought that up either. He was stabbed through the back, not the side. I almost wonder if maybe there's two or three answers that would actually work here. But if anything, the sword stand is the one that I'm leaning towards. Mainly because of what the dialogue said just before this about... Now, what was it Trucy told me she did just before she thrust the sword in the coffin? Those are the best clues that the game usually gives. I'm gonna try it. Here goes nothing. Ugh! What's this? A sword from the show? That's right, Your Honor. This rubber sword was in the sword stand under stage. During the trick, Miss Wright was supposed to swap the real sword for a rubber sword. And she told us on record that she remembers very clearly that she did. I see. So the sword the defendant thrust into the coffin was a rubber sword, was it? But then why was a steel sword found lying on the stage? Ah, oh, somebody must have put the steel sword there by swapping it with a rubber one. That's, okay, that makes sense now. Just after the incident occurred, the dragon set piece fell and the theater was evacuated. The real culprit must have used the resulting chaos to swap the rubber sword for the steel one. Give me the clap right now, I won't 
Do you not know when to give up, stink bug? That is not possible. Blood was found in the coffin hole that the sword was thrust into. Was it? It must have been left there when the accused withdrew the sword. This is incontrovertible proof that the sword she used was the steel one. Oh. But that blood could be the result of someone tampering with the crime scene after the fact. After the set piece fell and the audience was cleared out of the theater, there was plenty of time for somebody to plant that blood there. Oh man. That's reaching, but I guess it's something. If the sword the accused used was the robber one, then damn it. When exactly do you propose the victim was killed? Given that Mr. Rios was alive when he entered that coffin. Mm. Finding the answer to that question is gonna take a while, but it's precisely why we need to continue this trial. I think I accidentally rhymed there. Let me express my opinion. By all accounts, it is certainly reasonable to suspect the defendant based on the evidence. <clears throat> but as to the question of whether the sword the defendant used was rubber or steel, I believe further discussion is warranted. I suggest we hear from the defendant herself on this issue. Very well, Your Honor. Yes! I saved it, somehow. Too close for comfort, but still. Also, can we tell these people in the audience to stop trashing Trucy's confidence by calling her a killer? Just, just because... Let's adjourn for a brief 15-minute recess. I advise the prosecution and the defense to use this time to prepare. Prepare what? Prepare our earplugs. Defendant lobby number three. You know before long that butthead's gonna be up there. Who the hell's Harry? Tell me about it. We barely made it through by the skin of my teeth. I can't say I'm crazy about that prosecutor Sadmati either. You know, with the way he says let it go and move on as if it's nothing. Let it go and move on, huh? Oh boy, am I interrupting a secret conclave of villains or something? Oh god, what are you doing here? Got our next evil scheme in the works already? What do you want? Oh boy. Yeah, keep making that face, chump, and everybody's gonna change the channel. Look this way, Trucy. Now smile for the camera. Let's see those pearly whites. Isn't that what the grammar decree tells you to do? Get the fuck out of here, dude! Oh my god, you are such a fuck! <laughs> How does it feel, Trucy? Everybody online can't stop talking about you. They're calling you a real witch out there. Could this be the end of Troop Grammary? Go away, you creep! Oh, what's this? Something just charged into the frame. It looks like a yellow gorilla or something. Could it be Trucy's pet? Filming is prohibited inside the courthouse. You want me to get the bailiff? Yeah, get the bailiff. Huh? Filming? What are you talking about? I don't even have a camera on me. What the hell is this guy's problem? Oh, uh, he's even messing up my throat. What happened to the camera? It just disappeared. Right before our very eyes. <laughs> I'll be enjoying the rest of the Trucy show from the gallery. Oh my god, you know what I just thought of? Something crazy. What if this is the real Mr. Rius? I'm not even gonna, no, I'm not even going any further with that. Just how crazy would that be, though? I mean, he made a camera disappear, right? So, like, isn't that, I mean, it makes me think, wait a minute, is maybe he's a magician, too? I don't know. So if he, it's, maybe, it's, wow, dude. Oh my god, okay, you know what? Let's just keep going here. I put a, uh, there's no way the real Mr. Reese would be this much of an asshole, though, man! I put out a call for Trucy's fans to come and support her earlier, by the way. Bet I'll get some great footage out of them. It's gonna be good. Hang loose, baby! Oh man, you can go hang loose in your underwear. He called in some of Trucy's fans, but for what purpose? Because he wanted to see the despair in their eyes. He wanted to see hope turn into despair. Apollo, I think Mr. Readins just did. That's some high level sleight of hand. Huh? Why would he know how to do something like that? I don't know, but he definitely has some serious magic skills. No way. If 
I said magicians were all a bunch of good for nothings. Mr. Lawyer, uh oh, is it Edgeworth? Oh, hi. Hello, Bonnie. Can I help you with something? Oh, uh, well, there's something that's been bothering me. Really? What is it? Please see. Oh, dang it! I was just about to say she's alone now, so she can finally tell us whatever it is. And then the thing shows up. The thing. You know? Hey, Jummy, what are you whispering to Lobster Boy about? Betty, go away. <laughs> Who the heck do you think you are? You crazy? You want a piece of this? You know you have to talk to me first before you do or say anything, you harebrain. Harebrain. Nice. Shut your mouth, you dumb bunny. Come with me now. Oh, I wonder what was bothering her. There's no way we're finding that out with Betty constantly hovering over her like that. Gord is about to reconvene, dudes. Are you guys ready? You all right? Will you be all right testifying? Yeah, it's just... I wonder what Mr. Readings has up his sleeve. I doubt he's bringing in actual fans. Yeah, probably not. I wonder what he has up his sleeve, too. So much talk about sleeves. He better not be trying to get under Shrewsy's skin right now, of all times. I know. You're truly right, and you'll be fine! Oh! There goes Apollo with his best trick. That's right. Whenever I'm feeling down, I always tell myself I'm fine. Alright. I'll give it a try. I'm truly right and I'm fine! Thanks, Polly. I think I can do this now. Trucy, you're gonna be okay. I'm gonna make sure of that, okay? I'm not gonna let this happen. Yes, sirree. Oh, man.